I need someone to help me with that song. Hana si hallelujah. Hana si Forever, 
I worship you. I worship you. Lord, you reign forever. Lord, you reign forever. I worship you. I worship you. Hallelujah. I want you to ask the Lord for a definite encounter tonight. Father, here and now, give me an encounter. Transform my life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. I know a God who is merciful and kind, faithful and gracious. I'm the apple of his eyes, the thought that fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. Look how he's turned my life around. A shining star His glory to reveal Someone worshipping Him Very, very powerful song I want us to sing this part of the song together So I will worship Him forever Love Him forever Voices lift your hands. That I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one you have shown Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that we're not just wasting time 
singing choruses we are exposing our spirits to the atmosphere of worship because we love him because we cherish him because he's everything to us bless his name from the depth of your heart those of you outside bless him he's with you right there bless him I love you forever I love you forever I love you forever Lord I love you forever I love you forever I love you let it be a commitment from the depth of your heart God, no other influence. And in my life, be lifted forever. Be lifted forever. Be lifted forever. Lord, we lift you up. as you sing Hosanna to him Hosanna forever Hosanna bless that is he that comes in the name of the Lord was exposing our hearts and our spirits can I tell you this Southeast there are many of you here the revival that is coming is depending on your cooperation with the spirit of grace you have a choice tonight a choice to reject Jesus a choice to reject the pathway that leads to growth stature and transformation or you can choose tonight to say this is that night there are people in this auditorium and many who are outside beautifully seated who are saying apostle if you will give me a chance i will run to jesus i have never truly made that decision i have been around church i have even been given an appointment as a worker in church none of those is equal to salvation the bible says ye must be born again for there is no other name under heaven given unto men the bible says by which we must be saved now the beautiful thing about the things of the kingdom is that there is no compulsion i set before you blessing and cursing i set before you life and death but i counsel you to choose life that you and your seed 
may leave. Southeast, he comes to you again. Last year, probably, he spoke and you were not interested. Now he's giving you another chance. I'm going to make an altar call, two calls in one. Number one, for those who are making this decision genuinely and sincerely, and you're saying, Apostle, let this be the night where I hand over everything to the Lord Jesus. Number two, those who are saying, I have backslidden, there is no point lying. My life does not look like the life of a Christian, but I know that his mercy is able to find me. I will count one to five. And for those who are outside, I'm not sure you may be able to find a place inside. But then even if you are not able to come inside, may I request that you just move to your projector screen. There will be a few people there. But right in this place, I know there is someone Jesus is talking to. I'm going to count one to five. I'd like you to run and come and stand here right now. One. Make sure you are not pretending mean business with Jesus. This is not some church religious activity. Come. Come. South is come. He calls you. Come to Jesus. Most of us do not know the value of souls. No miracle takes a man to heaven. No breakthrough takes a man to heaven. No amount of money takes a man to heaven. The Bible says this is the record that God had given us eternal life and that this life is in his son. Whosoever had the son had this life. Now listen to me. Someday whether we love it or not, this life as we know is going to be folded like a curtain. That is the truth based on the word of God. One day we will see his face as he is. And that glorious morning, it may even be a service like this. And then that trump and the Bible says, they that are dead in Christ will arise first. And we who are alive and remain, that will be caught up with him in the air. And all that will happen in a moment, the same way you blink your eye, and that's it. Please, men of God, let me encourage you. In the name of Jesus who died and rose again, we are not doing ministry if souls are not being saved. I don't care what else is happening. I don't care what else is happening. Southeast if you do not place priority on structured and intentional evangelism there will be a generational divide there will be a group of people full of revelation who are not born again there will be a group of church goers who do not know jesus in order of priority the entry point to the kingdom is jesus not rema jesus not prayer jesus not fasting if you do all of this and you have not met the son of the living God, you are not saved. Are we together? So we must trust God that our altars, our pulpits, our assemblies, from the least prayer group to the greatest church and cathedral, we may not agree here and there doctrinally, we may have our divides across boards, no problem. But the one thing that must bind us together is the fact that every time God gives us an opportunity to converge and to worship, there should be someone, someone, even if it is one person who comes, he was worth the blood of Jesus. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. So you'll do what you do. We need a moment. This is the moment. You see, look at me. 
when you see a tree you can guess how many fruits can come out of it when you look at a maize stalk you can tell that at least two highest three can't be more than that but when you are holding a seed in your hand you don't know how many trees can come out of that seed there are many people who are standing right now they may look weak and powerless but you commend them to the word of his grace and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and watch the wonder working power some of these people some years to come they will be the ones maybe in this exact hall you will stand here and people will watch you while you cannot talk and they will say what is wrong you will say it was right in this same place ladies and gentlemen thank you for making this decision some of you are crying do not be ashamed of your tears may I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus the son of the living God the one who loved you and gave himself for you and I want you to say this after me you're not reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight in this place I declare my love for you tonight in this place I declare that you are the son of the living God I receive you as my Savior as my Lord and as my King truthfully and genuinely I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life I also declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray congratulations in the name of Jesus hallelujah now I'm going to give you a little instruction please I want you to listen carefully they left their seats to come here and any seat that is empty close to you please do well to watch for their things for those of them who left something behind we do not want to hear a situation where someone came out for an altar call and returned back and could not find their bag it's unfortunate that in an atmosphere like this these kinds of things can and do happen are we together praise god now i'm going to request that you follow the counselors they are going to have a word with you just a moment before they leave a word with you counselors let's make it very fast because i want them to be part of the service it's going to be a brief time and we'll pray and then i'll begin to minister hallelujah i congratulate you for making this noble decision and i know it will be for you from glory to glory if you just turn to my back there's a counselor waving his hands may i please request that you follow them let's honor them southeast just in a moment and you will rush back you can follow either of the aisles god bless you is this the best you can do Thank you for your patience now there are so many so I will request I will charge the counselors maybe just give them a slip so that they feel in fact that would have been what I would suggest just give them a slip once they feel it they can return back to their seat there's no need for asking any prayer needs we may not have that time you can always will announce after the meeting that either they meet at another day or so but let's give them a chance to be part of the service is that all right so please counsel us let's make it very fast once you've given them the sleep in fact if they cannot feel it legibly at the moment they can return with it to their seat feel it and then hand it over because there are quite a number of them and we can imagine those outside so that it does not overburden you because you need to hear what I have to teach and so we're able to pray God is 
a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. God is a miracle walker. God is. seated yesterday we began to discuss um, we began to talk about the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times the Bible says and they knew what Israel ought to do as a result they their brethren were at their command and I did tell us that there is a spiritual strategy for survival in every season. A strategy that can work for you when you stand before the Red Sea may not suffice when you stand in the front in the presence of the walls of Jericho. So that believers must sustain the intelligence to discern seasons and also be able to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to pull forth the strategy even for the season. Hallelujah. And we went to the book of Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus began to speak to us about the, the days, the end of the age. And he told us that the end of the age will be in the similitude of the days of Noah. Remember our teaching? I'm doing a quick recap. And so we went to check the life of Noah according to Genesis chapter 6. The Bible told us three things that happened in the days of Noah that parallels what is happening right now number one there was multiplication of men upon the earth number two the Bible says in the days of Noah Jesus speaking he said there were two categories of people number one those who were concerned about what to eat and drink and giving in marriage that means those whose focus was the gratification of the flesh and then there was Noah his wife their three sons and their wives who were focused about hearing what the spirit was saying and the lord beckoned on noah the bible says but noah found grace in the sight of god and then six verse one would tell us why noah found grace in the sight of god he said that noah was a just man and that noah walked with god are we together so we began to explore by the spirit the strategy for survival since we know that today's time and season is in the similitude of the days of Noah, we had to draw forth lessons from that day. And yesterday, the Lord released two principal strategies for survival. Number one, that in the times that we live, we must exalt the word of God as most supreme. That which is written must be greater than any prophetic experience. That which is written must be greater than any visionary experience. That the word of God must gain supremacy above and beyond any other spiritual experience. According to Colossians 1 verse 16, By him all things were created, both visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, and all things were made by him and for him. Hallelujah. We establish the fact that the word of God must gain supremacy in our lives. That we must cultivate honor for the word of God beyond prophetic experiences, beyond visionary experiences. That the margin of error when we explore all of these experiences outside of the word of God is very wide. Is that true? Even Isaac who was prophetic when it had to do with surviving the deception of Jacob, he could not survive it. His eyes were blind because there was no illumination, a symbol of blindness from scripture. Yet his prophetic instincts were still there. But without the illumination of the word of God, he himself made a mistake. Jacob carried Esau's coat and wore it and he touched him and said, the body is that of Esau, but the voice is that of Jacob. So it's important for us to understand that the secret of survival in this end time is that the word of God principally must be the foundation of our convictions. I told us yesterday that it is written is greater than I saw. It is written 
is greater than I heard. It is written is greater than I dreamt. Because none of those experiences have been tried. But the Bible says that the word of God has been tried seven times. So the word of God is dependable. Are we together? And then number two, we spoke about the ministry of prayer as an expression of priesthood. Very, very important that they who are not men of the altar in this end time will be people who are easily given to deception. We considered Matthew chapter 4, looking at the structure of Satan's temptation towards Jesus and how that it was the twin function of the ministry of prayer and that which is written that gave him victory. That when there is an emphasis on that which is written and we ignore the ministry of prayer, we will not have the fortitude to discern and when we emphasize the ministry of prayer and we de-emphasize the ministry of the word, it will activate our organs and stretch us into virgin dimensions in the realm of the spirit where we will meet with strange and familiar spirits like many have sadly encountered. Many prayed themselves into deception because they did not honor the word of God. And while their organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit opened up, they encountered familiar spirits and were taken to realms that they believe was heaven. And now when we vet their experiences in light of scripture, we find it one thing, that where they went to was not heaven. Because the realm of the spirit is a realm, is a space. If I do not know Enugu state, you can carry me anywhere and tell me it is Enugu state. I will return back with conviction. But for somebody who lives in Enugu state, when you look at my description, you will say, no, that place you went to. Or somebody who documented, or somebody who created the state, he would say, I created this state, I've been long enough. So there are many Christians who believe that the experiences they've had, just because it was supernatural, they think it is godly. Whether you serve Satan or demons, you will still have access or the Holy Spirit, you will still have access to the supernatural. It's only that the force and the influence and the intent of that encounter would not be to glorify God. Are we together? So that even in the realm of the spirit, the word of God has dominion there. So the dominion power of the word of God does not just stop in this realm. Even if we get to the realm of the spirit, the word of God still becomes the code of conduct. That God himself exalted the word above all the offices he occupies. Above every name that is named. If, whether in this world or in the world to come, the word of God has gained supremacy. If you never have a visionary encounter in your life and you stay with it is written, you will still arrive there. Did you hear what I said? That means if you never have any visionary encounter in your life and you stay with the integrity of that which is written, there is a guarantee that you will arrive. But you can have all the visions in the world and you ignore it is written. It will delve you into all versions of error because you are usually emotionally connected to your visionary experiences, even if it is a lie. A lie is not what is unreal to you. A lie is anything that does not come from God. Even if it is real to you and it does not come from God, it is still a lie. And I promised us yesterday that we'll look a bit into the other aspect that we did not touch. So let's see if we can touch it a bit and then we'll pray. Those outside, if you're with me, shout a loud hallelujah. May God bless you. Quite determined people standing, sitting, stretching and enjoying the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. So the Bible tells us according to Revelations chapter 5 Revelation chapter 5 and then verse 10 the Bible tells us that we have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests or kings and priests and the Bible says the jurisdiction of our dominion is the earth very important information there 
that we are made unto our God kings and priests. Now please look up. There are two theological classifications of believers. Theologically speaking, believers are classified in two folds. Number one, there is our classification based on our identity. Right? So, the Bible classifies believers and gives us names like joint heirs. Gives us names like... Um, it tells us that we are one with Christ we are crucified with Christ all of these descriptions attempts to show our oneness with Christ are we together in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 the Bible says finally brethren be strong in the Lord amplified says draw your strength from your union with him so that your strength is based on your union with the Christ so there is classification based on our oneness and our identity are we together so he calls us sons he calls us um joint heirs with christ and heirs of god but there is the second classification that is based on assignment and function the second classification is not just based on our identity is based on our job description so he gives us names like light. He gives us names like salt. Matthew 5 from verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, he says. And if the salt has lost its saltiness or sever, he says, wherewith shall it be salted? It is good for nothing except to be downtrodden and to be, to be trampled underfoot by men. Then he says, ye are the light of the world. He says, where a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden, neither do men light a lamp, and put it under a bushel but they put it on a lamp stand or a candle stand and it gives light to everybody there and then he says permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good deeds is that true and glorify your father in heaven the bible calls us ambassadors the bible calls us witnesses according to john 1 6 acts chapter 1 and verse 8 you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses but one of the the most concise description of the believer with respect to function is the word king and priest captured in those two words is the entirety of the assignment of the believer he says we are kings and he says we are priests my focus is the king part but let me just tidy up what i started yesterday the bible says we are priests that we have been called into a priesthood now i'm glad that i'm talking to easterners because you understand the concept of priesthood very thoroughly the advantage of your culture provides you that opportunity to understand priesthood thoroughly every believer in christ who intends to function effectively advancing the purposes of the kingdom must understand priesthood are we together if you do not understand priesthood you will be inefficient as a believer a priest based on scripture is number one a mediator the assignment of a priest is to mediate between two realms a priest is a system of connection between two realms a priest mediates between the realm of the spirit and then the physical realm and the Bible lets us know that by reason of our design we have the advantage of tapping resources and information from both realms the physical realm and the realm of the spirit every man was designed to have that advantage you can tap into the supplies that come from the physical realm and you can also enjoy the duality of realm i can be here right now and i'm looking at you and my spirit can have access to a dimension beyond the scope of science and i can tap intelligence from that realm jesus was sitting and when they came to him he looked at nathaniel and said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile and nathaniel said where do you know me from and he says while you were under the tree i saw you nathaniel was amazed wow who is this that didn't have to come where i was and and that is the basis that is the advantage that you have hallelujah 
whether it was the hedonistic nations or God's covenant people in Israel, all through scripture you see that both of these sides paid attention and had a healthy respect for priesthood. Is that true? So if it was not the ark of God you were carrying, at least you would honor the presence of Dagon. But in any case, you knew that unassisted by the realm of the spirit, you will not be able to advance. Egypt was a place of wizardry for starters. The Bible tells us very clearly that the first major problem that happened between two people in the Bible, two people in the Bible was a subject of priesthood. I hope you know that. Cain and Abel. The Bible tells us that when Adam knew his wife, she gave birth to Cain and Abel. And in the course of time, both of them went to offer sacrifices. There was something that Adam taught them about priesthood. Remember, at that time, there was no Old Testament. So what we're discussing has nothing to do with Old or New Covenant. And yet there was priesthood. So priesthood is not the subject of Old Testament or New Testament. That practice predated all of that. They understood the power of priesthood and altars. And the Bible says they went to offer sacrifices. Unfortunately, there must have been something that happened to Cain that made him not to understand the protocol of administering that priesthood. And the Bible says they both had sacrifices upon their altars. And for Abel, his sacrifice rised up to heaven. And for Cain, watch this now, his sacrifice was not accepted. And Cain was angry. And the Lord came to him and said, Cain, why are you angry? If you have done well, that means if you subscribe to the pattern of priesthood, would you not be accepted? He said, now that you have ignored priesthood, offense is coming. There are privileges that you should have gotten if you understood priesthood. But now because you did not tap into that protocol, you are angry at those who are getting the result that priesthood is coming. He says, sin is lying at your door. That means bitterness and offense. The Bible says, ye ask and ye have not. And you have because you pray amiss. That means you have not mastered the protocol of priesthood. And if you do not understand priesthood, you cannot tap into the resources from the realm of the spirit that are made available to the believer today. The resources that we need to walk in victory in are not natural resources. The Bible says they reside in heavenly places in Christ. You must master the technology of opening the gates of the realm of the spirit and drawing to your life the, the, the resources that you need to excel. And the assignment of priesthood is to help you tap into the resources of heaven and to use them here and now. The inability to know that will put you in the position of Cain. Jealousy and envy, you will begin to be angry. How come this man is a normal man like me and yet you are accessing help that is from another dimension that is not here? Priesthood. Priesthood is the cure for jealousy. When you understand that the same Lord is rich unto all, that if I understand just like Abel, Cain would have simply asked Abel, what am I doing wrong? And he would have expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly, like Aquila and Priscilla did to Apollos. When they met him in Acts 18, he, he excelled in various things, but he knew only the baptism of John. The Bible says after the conference, they called him and they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. There are many people today who do not know that more than just depending on a man of God to pray for you, more than just depending on another person to supply for your spiritual needs, there is an advantage that you have in Christ through the ministry of priesthood that independently you can tap into the supply of the spirit. Are we together now? This, not knowing this has put an unusual burden on men of God. Sometimes we are happy because we think it's good, but that's why we die early. Because there is a burden we are carrying that God did not put. Are we still together tonight? Priesthood. So when you understand that you can hear God, when you understand 
that if you master the art of prayer God can hear when you understand that the Holy Spirit wants a functional distinct relationship with you even though there is the fivefold to guide and help but your life does not need to become so helpless as though God decided to choose others and throw others away an individual can as an act of your will have a functional relationship with the Holy Spirit are we together there was a man called Stephen that man was so great and even though he was apportioned the welfare department it did not stop his intimacy with the Holy Spirit his priesthood was so strong that even though in the welfare department he did not have to be on the pulpit yet his testimony was one that was noteworthy believers please hear me the darkness that looms around the horizon of our environments and the world global will require people that sustain the intelligence of priesthood to survive when job was having an encounter with the god of the bible job was frustrated i wish we had the time tonight it's a miracle service so i'm, I'm this is just an exhortation i hope but I, I really wish i had that time to to just open our eyes to see what happened when you read the book of job now theologically speaking job was written at a time of human conscience they believed that it was somewhere in between the first and the last book of genesis theologians still argue as to the accurate timing of the writing of job and the character of the book of job is very very strange because we are given the advantage of seeing from the realm of the spirit what was happening there are many times in writing biblical accounts we write from this part the perspective of the writer but just like the Pentateuch was written, the five books of Moses, they were written from a standpoint of superior intelligence. So we could see backstage what was happening. The Bible says once upon a time, the sons of God came together and Satan was in their midst. This is very strange because that means at that time he was already fallen. He was never called Satan. Satan means the deceiver. Is that true? He was there in their midst. And then the Bible says, he, he spoke and said, have you, con God told him now, have you considered my servant Job, a man that feared God and eschewed evil? And hear this, Satan now told him and said, does he serve you for nothing? Give me access to touch his resources and he will curse you to your face. And according to that account, now, um, if we are discussing it classically, there are many things we need to correct about that account. Because when you read it the way it was written, it does not reflect something about the character of God. When you are looking at the Old Testament and studying the Old Testament, you must understand that even though scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost, but it came through the imperfection of human vessels. Are we together? And so in interpreting scripture, you must be able to buy into the lens of the Spirit. Jesus came as a correction to our, our theology about God. There are many things the prophet told us about God that we believe. But Jesus came as a marking script so that we can vet everything they said. That means we have a right to doubt what any prophet said, no matter what, provided we do not find it in Jesus. Are we together now? So I'm saying this so that we will balance because when you study the structure of the writing of the prophet, they did not do justice to the nature of God. And it was not that they were bad people. They were limited themselves because we see in part. Based on their practice, anything that was supernatural, they credited it to God. So you will hear things like a lying spirit came from God. God cannot be found with Gail. In fact, not even God. Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. That was why he shut the mouth of Zacharias. Are we together? The Bible says in him there is no shadow of turning or variableness. So we have a right to vet what the prophet wrote based on the integrity of the person, Jesus. One of the ways that we know God is through the person, Jesus. Jesus has come not just to show us the way, but he came as an expression. And God himself accredited Jesus and told us to hear him. So we know for a shorty that Jesus is a worthy representation of the Father in his entirety. Everything that was not captured in the earth ministry of Jesus and was credited to God in the Old Testament, we have a right to vet it. I'm saying that because from this story now, if you don't understand this, it will be like it was God that afflicted Job 
and did a lot of things you see why i had to just digress but it was not exactly so anyway back to our discussion the bible now says a certain day on the earth watch this now that discussion happened where in the realm of the spirit that boardroom was not earthly but then the bible says a certain day that means timing was given to its manifestation in the earth realm so there are many discussions that happen over the destinies of men and then they pick dates on earth when it will manifest the assignment hold on now the assignment of priesthood is to be involved in that meeting that you cannot be a victim of happenings in the realm of the spirit sound is hear me there are many things that happen physically and we say it just happened no sir the book of job shows us that anything that happens now was finished already if you were not in the meeting don't blame the realm of the spirit you have an advantage to participate hallelujah please sit down now you understand why i say you in the east should understand what i'm saying because you have profound respect for elders and councils there are decisions that if they ask you as an elder over a region come and be part of the decision if you are not there and certain things were concluded you have no right to blame the elders because they gave you a chance to come are we together could it be that the situation plaguing your family now you thought it started january 1 no sir in the realm of the spirit it was orchestrated how many are there eight of them which of them has the greatest destiny and they look from the realm of the spirit and they say this lady rebecca has the greatest destiny and say how do we attack her and then the bible says on a certain day hear me please listen believers hear me in the book of esther her man was not an ordinary man her man was operating under a spirit that may you see if you read the bible as a historic material you will not the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to fetch out light from the knowledge knowledge is not equal to revelation until it mixes with understanding it is knowledge plus understanding that equals revelation are we together so the light that came her man was operating under the influence of the spirit of the antichrist just like jezebel notice the character of the spirit of the antichrist is that the moment it shows up it does not stop till it goes to the place of power the jurisdiction of the operation of the spirit of the antichrist is when you are around power that should already tell you many things without me saying them are we together now the character of the spirit of the antichrist the ministry of that spirit is not activated until it enters where kings stay so haman coming by the spirit of the antichrist becomes such a close friend to ahasuerus who was a king over 127 provinces are we together now the same way that same spirit operating through jezebel made sure that she married ahab the king the same way that spirit operating in Herodias made sure she was close to Herod for the sake of destroying John the Baptist. Are we together now? The human actors may change, but the operation of the spirits are the same. The same way a governor can come and go, the individual leaves, but the office remains there. Is that true? So the Bible says Haman, unknown to the king, Haman was there. Watch this now. Haman was there to promote an agenda. I hope you know Haman was not just there. Haman knew that his purpose of being there, he was under a, an influence to annihilate the Jews. a certain day. And on that certain day, for whatever reason, a man woke up in the morning 
and stretched himself what a wonderful day not knowing the realm of the spirit had concluded the destruction of that man so somebody can get up in the morning from Enugu state and say see you later I'm coming not knowing that where he's entering is not a mall he's entering the valley of the shadow of death because the absence of the understanding of priesthood has caught up with him when it was time for Esther to deal with the issue of her man she was the king's wife so she had the authority to say honey there is a pro that is not the issue of honey because the king was already under the influence of her man and she said okay I'm about to function as royalty but first let me visit my priesthood set yourselves to fast and pray are you seeing the strategy now and you hear me anything you fight physically you are only wasting your time it starts from the realm of the spirit when your priesthood is intact we have been made unto God King Esther said set up yourselves I'm going to fast you will fast I'm going before the king how can a woman be so afraid of her own husband was that the first time entering the inner chamber this was more than just meeting a man she was meeting a man who was already under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist now watch this it was in the place of prayer that the strategy was revealed to her don't talk to him yet use honor so she said king she went in there and he lifted the golden censer what do you want and she said oh king i just want to celebrate your glory and your royalty i want to prepare a feast does that make sense is that a weapon but that is the foolishness yet the power of priesthood you will come up with strategies in the place of prayer that does not make sense but it will work wonders sometimes you can go to pray and god says go to a particular region you will see a land there where nobody has bought just buy it and keep it it does not make sense as soon as you buy it one company will just come and say ten times the price we will still buy it this is the wisdom of dominion by priesthood most believers pray but they do not understand the advantage that should be drawn to the place of prayer is someone learning the moment you see anything wrong in the physical before you address it physically suddenly your child starts failing in the exam what is wrong the school fees is increasing everybody in the family is getting mysteriously sick my money just got trapped come on you are wiser than that you should already know the realm of the spirit is negotiating a certain day to make something happen but by the authority of priesthood you can show up in that meeting and say who is deciding my destiny without my own permission oh yes you can oh yes you can who is deciding my tomorrow who is deciding the destiny of my children and not consulting with me i am a king and a priest i have earned the right by redemption to be part of any heavenly decision making process please do not forget this sermon no God is handing some of you a secret to end 10 years of trouble 20 years of trouble now hear me please sit down please sit down so you find out that there are patterns across families a very beautiful and lovely lady a gentleman comes to say where are you from where are your parents and there is an answer from the realm of the spirit remember that is the lady who will give birth to a prophet make sure that relationship does not work and the innocent guy if he does not understand priesthood he will not even know what happened to him he will just say no i don't i don't know why and the realm of the spirit claps the ignorant man has lost 10 years of his life because he, he did not have discernment are we together when god wants to when the devil wants to destroy you he can now put you in a position where 
you don't see things from the standpoint of the spirit a young man just when his helpers are about to come he will say i feel like living any go he does not even know what he's taking him to and yet god will try to be using dreams and visions to say no you are about to miss something go to church hear a man of god let me tell you this do you know when you invite people to come to the presence of god you don't know what you did for some of them you do not know the joy and the dancing in heaven finally this guy is going to a meeting where he will hear this like some of you are hearing now if god opens your eyes to know the angelic activities that coordinated themselves to make sure you are here because your hearing is on behalf of those who are depending on you Pray in the spirit in one minute. Matters of destiny. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Nothing just happens. Let me repeat it again. Nothing that you don't understand it does not mean it was not organized. Your child does not just become great. No. Your children don't just become respectful. No. Man of God, your church does not just grow. You think people are stupid? Do you know what draws them to leave their homes and come? No. I'm sincere and I love God. That is not enough reason, dear people. The same way your child does not just fail. Every helper in your life, when you need them most, doors just close. You will now know how God lifted. Let me tell you, the Bible does not record it, but I believe I know what Joseph was doing in the prison because Paul and Silas did it too. There is a protocol that shows how prison doors open. That anytime prison doors open, the person who was bound used priesthood and swung open that door. So we don't see Joseph praying. But make no mistakes if that door opened because it was not the metal bars that closed him it was the salvation of israel in egypt that was tied to him potiphar's wife was just an innocent prey that was used by the devil and took him there and he did not know that the wisdom of god was being played the same way judas didn't know what he was doing over jesus that the role he was playing in deceiving him was eventually leading to the redemption that was why paul said had they known this if they had known that what they were doing was leading to an outcome they would stop jesus from going to those people and turn a journey of 40 days to 40 years how you see you have to read your bible by revelation if not all you'll be reading is stories always find out why the things that happen happen not just that they happened One of the ways God shows you his mercy when you fail his test is to recycle that season with you again. It is better and easier than going down. Did you hear what I said? You can see this, what I'm teaching you is not error. It's programmed even through the law of life. Is that true? So if a woman is not able to take in this month, what happens? That season is recycled again. Is that true? So that it can give her a chance. It's a spiritual principle. One of the most powerful spiritual words is the word again. And Adam knew his wife again. And the man who fell rose again. And the one who could not pray yesterday after many years now started praying again. Again captures hope. It means what I was not yesterday or what I was yesterday that I lost. I can have it back. Priesthood. I 
think I'll just stop here so that we'll talk about the king dimension. If not, we'll not leave this place this night. I have to be fair on you. You see, sometimes this teaching, and let me submit to you truly, the matters of the spirit require time on. No matter how careful you are, it is line upon line. Are you seeing why when Jesus resurrected, ah, Jesus, you are up, say, keep quiet. Let's go back to our, finish our lecture. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming. You are not even prepared yet. There are still some things. Jesus himself was out of time. And he said, look, for the next 40 days, he did not spend time celebrating his resurrection. He returned quickly from heaven after that coronation service. What a visionary God. How do you triumph over death, sin and the grave, and you don't even have time to celebrate that victory? You come down quickly and gather the 120. 40 days of lecture. And he says, guys, I know I'm done. You tarry 10 more days and the Holy Spirit is coming. Look at the fruit of that mentorship. There are many lessons we can teach from scripture. One of it is the error of over celebrating every level. Now, when you pat yourself at the back, it suffices for that time and you get to walk. We look unto Jesus and we learn that lesson. Are we together? I have listened to yesterday's teaching that I preached here and the session in the morning before i sleep tonight no matter how late i sleep i must listen to this teaching tonight it's a discipline i'm bound by a covenant so you keep being lazy like this and you say god open doors for me you are not going anywhere it's god that will stop you as an act of his mercy because how do you mentor nations and kings with that kind of laziness Let's talk about kings. Forgive me, eh? Another time we'll finish because this priesthood is like Mass 101, then there's 201 of it. You understand what I'm saying? So, aha, so forgive me. Let's just end this one where we are. Let's talk about kings. Now, please look up. When you study the book of the beginnings, because theologically speaking, every time you want to study a subject in the Bible, you go to the book of the beginnings and you begin to study what we call in theology the law of first mention you look for where that word was used first and you study the context with which it was used that becomes your compass every time you are studying that thought the key to interpreting the bible is number one to start with literal interpretation if it does not add up then it means that you must use two or three witnesses, other scriptures to now bring it to context. If it does not, then you need the agency of the spirit to now draw out its prophetic meaning. Are we together now? So, when we go to the Bible, we see that something happened. The first man who was created in the image and the likeness of God, we call him Adam. I hope you know by now he was not the first man. But he was the first man who was made in the image and the likeness of God. There were other humanoid species before the arrival of Adam. That's for sure. The Garden of Eden was not created for Adam alone. The first occupant of that Garden of Eden was Lucifer himself. You read your Bible. That was in Eden, the Garden of the Lord. Is that true? Until iniquity was found in you. So Lucifer's vendetta with Adam was justifiable. <laughs> How do you come to occupy some? Oh. When you understand this, you will understand the parable of the talents. There are many parables in the Bible that were not just stories. They were adumbrations of old things that happened. The Bible tells us that Satan was not just a liar but was a murderer. My question is who did he kill that you know? That record is not captured in Genesis. That means there is an old story somewhere. No wonder he's called the old servant. Jesus did not just call him a liar. He called him a murderer. A murderer means you make someone die. I'm laughing at myself. Goodness. May the Lord grant us grace. In the name of Jesus. To God be the glory, yeah? This is not just a man of God dishing out revelation. Remember, the focus is on Jesus. 
anything that he has done through us is that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us are we together so the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve now there is still a theological debate today as to the paternity of the man Cain and Abel because Adam and Eve as far as we know all through the lifetime of their stay we do not see anything in them that looks like a conscious deviation from their love for God they disobeyed and they fell but we do not see that action so where then did Cain come with the manifestation of another spirit and Paul when mentoring the Roman church began to speak about the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh is that true he said in my body I see two members walking so that the things I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. The things I do not want to do, you know, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He began to give that exegesis about the spirit life and even that of the flesh. And we know from scripture that Cain was older than Abel. So, the Bible lets us know that in a matter of time, Cain came and then Abel came whether they were twins from the same womb because the next time the Bible will say Adam knew his wife it was Seth that came so there is still a theological debate whether they were twins or whatever but that's not the issue we then see that they were manifestations of two spirits in Cain and Abel are we together now when it had to do with priesthood Abel mastered the art of the altar but Cain did not Cain fell he fell there and was angry killed his brother Cain are we together look at the power of priesthood that even when Abel died the altar was still speaking the blood itself spoke and God had to honor it and call Cain and said Cain what is this and Cain would not even repent am I my brother's keeper why are you asking me that kind of question and he said, okay, because of this, there's a consequence you'll be cursed. And everybody who sees you will kill you. And Cain said, uh-uh, I know something about you. You are merciful. Let me tap into your mercy. This is too much for me. And he said, all right, I will put a mark upon you. You will be a fugitive. You will be a vagabond. But no one will kill you. Watch this. He failed in the test of priesthood. But the moment Cain departed from the presence of the Lord, the first thing he did was to start building a city. The Bible says he built a city and named it after his son Enoch. Not the Enoch we know. His son. That means even if I am not here, that agenda must continue. Are we together now? Every time you see building cities, every time you see dominion over the cosmos, it was the children of the born woman and it was the hedonistic people. For some reason, Believers had mastered priesthood, but that king dimension, we have not understood it. So our relationship with Jesus is flourishing, but the advancement of kingdom come has continued to suffer through the ages. Look at Egypt. Egypt was not a place that honored God. Look at Babylon. Babylon was not a place that honored God. Look at Nineveh. Nineveh was not a place that honored God. Look at Rome. Rome was not a place that honored God. Are you seeing now? Everywhere there was dominion. It seemed like they pushed God out of the system. This is what God wants to correct. Because that error is still happening till today. There are many believers after praying and fasting. We do not know how to take over. So one person, by take over, I don't mean this blind concept of take over that people believe that one day, they, you know, they would take over the buildings. When the Bible speaks, it speaks in a spiritual sense, not a carnal sense. Are we together now? Take over does not mean take over buildings, physical monuments. It means to influence the cosmos with the ideology of the kingdom. Because the buildings will come and fade away. God is not interested in the physical structures alone. He's interested in the men. Because everything will be, will be burned with fire. Is it not in your Bible? Now hear me please. Seated in this place right now are vibrant people who love Jesus. Is that true? Seated in this place today are prayer warriors and fasting giants. But also seated in this place are people who have been without jobs for many years seated in this place are people who have lost their jobs because they stood for jesus 
seated in this place are people who do not have access to government access to systems of power and it has become detrimental to the growth of the church please hear me there are many people who do not understand the aspect of dominion that has to do with that king dimension so the bible says you are a chosen generation is that in your bible that's first peter 2 and verse 9 i believe a royal priesthood and holy nation he called us a peculiar people he said we have been called out of darkness into we have been called to show forth the praises of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light there is an expectation god has for the church in nigeria the church in the east of the niger the church in enugu state there must be that dual excellence of priesthood and kingship if we miss it just like i balanced the word and prayer yesterday are we together now now here's the mistake we have made as men of god respectfully speaking because of the excellency of our call we have dwelt in the area of priesthood and we have trained the body of believers to be excellent priests but we have ignored the fact that they are not priests alone to the point that the average believer now who the holy ghost starts telling him remember you are a king too he conceives it as carnality and an interruption to his priesthood so he says no don't talk about money don't talk about influence just leave me with my prayer and fasting and that may be wonderful except that when darkness comes you will become a slave forever the purposes of god has suffered there are many great men of god today who cannot afford land because the devil knows that once he gives you territory territory will give room for more and he will fight so we are praying in church while policies have been manipulated that frustrates the program of god and we think the answer is just to pray we have done this for elections it did not work we have done this for our lives it did not work because priesthood alone does not produce the results it is king and priest are we together king and priest let me share with you a thought or two and then we'll pray so the bible tells us that we have been made stewards of this part of god's kingdom in genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 the bible says and god made man elohim said let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the birds of the air when you see birds of the air and the fish it's not talking about the animals it's talking about the realms are we together it's just an expression when he said the birds of the air it does not mean birds <clears throat> it just means the realm of the air the realm of the sea the realm of land so it's important for us to understand the jurisdiction of our dominion that means anything that happens within that sphere you have a right to be part of it are we together from a scientific standpoint we have mastered the air we have supersonic jets we have all kinds of things that we have drone systems that can go i was discussing with my people was it yesterday or day before yesterday about drones that can be sixty-five thousand feet above sea level and their camera can zoom with precision even to your toilet can you imagine that kind of thing that's how much man has conquered now we're exploring other planets because it's within the scope of our dominion that's why we have the power to do it babel was built without the assistance of the holy spirit it was the power of man that built babel and yet it was built to the point that only god destroyed it so don't be surprised if hedonistic nations have been built they are using the dominion power that was given man but hear me believers we have not been taught the concept of kingdom advance the average believer does not understand kingdom advance when you begin to understand the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom listen carefully i submit to you that most of the teachings on the kingdom have not been balanced most of the teaching on the kingdom stops at priesthood 
but it does not extend to that kingly dimension so when jesus was mentoring the disciples who would later become apostles he started in matthew chapter 5 in what we call the beatitudes is that true when he taught them he now got to a point where he now started teaching them the wisdom of walking in the cosmos and here's what he said behold i send you as sheep among wolves therefore be wise as serpents oh 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 jesus is talking about a serpent a serpent has never been used except for the rod the serpent that was raised the brazen altar that they would look and leave now he's saying borrow something from the wisdom of the serpent and understand that everything that surrounds you as the believer they are wolves have you ever seen a wolf discussing with a sheep when a wolf sees a sheep it eats it up that means there is a technology we must download from heaven that becomes our weapon of survival if we are to walk in dominion now there are a few people in the bible who survived they penetrated systems and structures and they enthroned christ institutionally the first of them that we record in the bible please look up the first of them that we record in the bible was the man joseph the bible talks about egypt you know egypt was a place of wizardry but it was also a place of plenty joseph finds his way to egypt and then becomes the prime minister by a technology that we must understand if we are going to walk in dominion it took more than prayer for joseph to go there joseph prayed to get to the palace but when he got to the palace he did not pray there now there was a place of creativity and intelligence albeit by the spirit but in the presence of the king it was not prayer he prayed the prayer was to prepare him to get to the king god supported his arrival there by shutting the heavens over the sorcerers so that they would check and not be able to interpret the king's dream and here comes joseph the king sent for joseph it was up to joseph now if he had prepared when he stood there the king said this is my dream seven cows seven lean cows seven ears of corn well nourished the poor ones and he said oh king let me give you your interpretation the lord will give pharaoh an answer of peace pharaoh right this is competence at work now are we together and he said oh king what you saw is seven years of plenty that will be followed by seven years of famine and then when he was done that was not the answer he said now let me give you a recommendation he didn't say i am i am a child of yahweh so <clears throat> he didn't need to do that the light in him was showing and he said oh king save 20 percent of your produce for that 70 years economic solutions and as soon as he gave that, the king looked. Do you know what Joseph said? He said, king, search for a man discreet and wise. It was a diplomatic way to say, I dare you, check the entire Egypt. If you will find a man with that dual combination of the intelligence of priesthood, and then who knows how to perform his kingly duty. Please sit down. And the king said, for as much as God has shown you this, there is no man who, I don't care where you are coming from. I don't care what tribe you are. You have answered the king. Competence will veto your background. Competence will veto the limitations of status quo. Many believers give excuses, but I am praying. Why am I not being promoted? You are an excellent priest, but your job is looking for the king, not just the priest. Are you seeing where we have failed and it is the assignment of the men and women of God to holistically mentor the body of Christ on one hand to be excellent as far as our priesthood is concerned but not to leave us there the purpose of priesthood is to help you access the resources that makes for your excelling but when they arrive you take on your priestly regalia and dress like the king that you are and begin to demonstrate the intelligence of the kingdom are we together so joseph profess an economic solution and three things happen to him as once the king said i am pharaoh 
and except on the throne that I'll be higher than you but as far as the matters of administration over Egypt is concerned you are Lord immediately he was given a wife without struggling and they brought to him the wife of Potiphera the priest of on they gave him a new name they dressed him with a royal regalia in 24 hours the lifting power of kingship if you understand your place as a king that is dominion now watch this when Joseph got there under his watch he preserved the people of God that was the purpose of his arrival there until he died and there was another Pharaoh who knew no Joseph hear what he said he said when you are leaving Egypt carry my bones do you know what he was saying carry this formula it's not just carry my physical bones there is a structure when you leave Egypt don't live without learn the lesson you were not there it's now 430 years but when you are living remember that as you sojourn do not be priests alone be priests and kings watch this sit down sit down so when they were living they did not just live with the God of heaven God gave them gold gave them resources it was for a reason because they were going to build him a tabernacle in the wilderness is that true but the devil quickly came and manipulated Aaron and all of them and they built a, a, an image and said you are the one who brought us out and they landed themselves into trouble do you notice that the people of God continue to move like fugitives they never had a place of their own have you noticed that all through the Bible that the nation of Israel kept struggling because they do not do well as kings they conquered lands but they could not exact dominion that dominion aspect did not seem to work until a man arose called David we'll leave that for another day you would see that from the arrival of David until the ark was taken away Israel now found that oh, you will now know why he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah do you know he's both lion and lamb when you talk of lamb you talk of priesthood but when you talk of lion you talk of the king are we together now so if your theology is just the lamb alone the lamb was slain as a sacrifice but the lion leaves of the tribe of Judah when blind Bartimaeus wanted to be healed he did not say Jesus help me he said thou son of David and Jesus had that and he said from a blind man who taught you why did you call David thou son of David and he said what do you want now you are calling for dominion that my sight will be open and he said that's it it's done believers hear me it is possible for God's people to live like fugitives within a land no house no influence no believers in the place of government because we are not taught the only thing for many believers that we know is prayer and Bible study and fasting and there is nothing wrong with that that is priesthood but the intelligence of living in the cosmos most believers do not know and the key listen to me the key to kingdom advance is that kingly dimension in partnership with that priestly dimension it was always king priest prophet this was a tripartite formation every time there is a corruption in that pattern there will be spiritual consequences so if I say show me the priests in Enugu I will see many of you prayer warriors and war giants men and women of God but if I say show me the kings there will be few people who are standing that is the reason why men of God out of pressure they do well as priests but there's no money to pay the bills and they are now tempted to compromise and manipulate because a man of honor who does not know the Bible says will die like a beast in the field even though he's a man of honor are we together now in Psalm 5 he said what is man that thou art mindful of he says you have put all things under his feet so that is honor but if that man does not know being a king in the kingdom is knowledge dependent everybody say knowledge. knowledge your kingly dimension is released through knowledge 
the bible says they know not psalm 82 and verse 5 neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes today jesus is called king of kings the question is who are the other kings it's not the royal fathers king of kings it's in your bible revelation chapter 11 i think verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded the trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and of we his christ and he shall reign forever and ever Emmanuel God is with us and he shall reign he shall reign he shall reign forever hallelujah the Bible says in Luke chapter 16 when you read from verse 1 to 8 Jesus was speaking about a parable and he made a very interesting statement in verse 8 I believe he said the children of this world are wiser than the children of the kingdom why would Jesus make such a statement he said I have studied the children of the kingdom I've seen the absence of the intelligence that makes for dominion I do not see that dominion component but I see priesthood hear me there is a clarion call upon the body of Christ to continue to excel as priests like we have done but there is a there is a desperate need for structured mentorship in the area of dominion by understanding kingdom and the principles that make for kingdom advance and please hear me the key to dominion in the cosmos is influence influence is the ability to make men buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty are we together to advance the kingdom of god we need evangelism but we need influence evangelism enthrones christ in the hearts of men but influence enthrones the ideology the value system of the kingdom across a strata Today we honor great brands when we say Coca-Cola, when we say this, when we say that. You see several people, listen carefully, several people will come and buy that product. Coca-Cola, they are buying logos and they are buying names because of the power of influence. If we are going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom, it will not just happen through priesthood alone. We must incorporate in addition to priesthood. The influence that comes by being kings that way the kingdoms of this world indeed will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ now when the governor in a state like yours becomes a child of God and the members of Parliament become Christians like Daniel are you seeing that now Daniel was a king and he reigned through the dispensation of three kings I wish I had the time I would have shown you one person who demonstrated it classically was the man Daniel. His priesthood was there in place. When Satan knew that he was excelling through his priesthood, he gave a decree that there would be no prayer for 30 days. And Daniel said, no way. The reason why I am effective as a king is because of the strength of my priesthood. He opened the window towards Jerusalem. Why towards Jerusalem? Remember the covenant of David. When they were dedicating the temple, he says, whoever faces here, he could not take a chance just depending on his faith and his belief alone. He had to tap into a covenant system that would guarantee God showing up for him. And he opened the window towards Jerusalem and he prayed. When they caught him, they took him to the lion's den. That is the power of priesthood. It preserves you even when you are king. They threw him in the lion, in the lion's den. And angels came and surrounded him. When he came out safe, they promoted him. Kings and priests. You are a man of God, but don't forget you are a banker too. When you get to the bank, it is not just prayer. Your prayer is done in your secret place. You receive intelligence from the prayer and validate it through your banking excellence. 
are we together now you are a construction engineer you are a prayer warrior and a fasting giant i agree but i need to see it translated into products and services that can better the lives of people you now justify the the validity of your intimacy with a higher power that is not human many believers are poor in demonstrating the power of god not just in terms of miracle signs and wonders but in terms of excellence the level of transformation that comes when Jesus was speaking, they looked at him and said, what manner of man is this? What wisdom is this? When you read Proverbs chapter 8, he spoke about wisdom from verse 8 down to 16. He said, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. He says, with me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness, that they that love me, you know, and, and he began to give the excellency of wisdom. He said, I was there when God founded the earth. Wisdom personified. One of the indices that help men to stand in their dominion is wisdom. Another is value and productivity. Are we together? Now, unbelievers have ignored priesthood as far as authentic priesthood to honor Jesus the Christ is concerned, but they have mastered the art of building cities. They build businesses, they build empires, they build our houses, they build our clothes, and every money that comes, we carry it to them. Every money that comes, we carry it to them. And the law is that the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. And so one person can check and see that God is doing something well in Enugu and pass just one policy that frustrates the purposes of God. And there is nobody in parliament to defend the interests of the kingdom. Kings must arise. Did you hear what I said? Kings must arise. He is both lion and lamb. He is not lamb alone. Most of us have stayed long enough in that lamb dimension. In addition to it, we must be lions. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never mentor a people to just be excellent in priesthood alone. I believe in the power of influence. I was told yesterday, and I pray he does not get embarrassed, that the owner of this beautiful facility is this man who is sitting down here. And I had the honor to meet him yesterday. And I said, this is dominion. You see that? We honor him for it. I, I, I do not know him. I just met him yesterday. The reason why we are able to gather in a comfortable place like this is somebody in the place of prayer tapped into the grace for favor and used it to do something physical. God, who is a spiritual God, produced an earth that is physical. So, the spiritual treasures you are receiving, turn it into something physical. Lives that are changed, hospitals that are built, transform society. Are we together? When your priesthood turns sinners to saints, prostitutes to saints, when through your priesthood you come up with a scholarship program that gives 1,000 Enugu citizens um, a scholarship to go to school, now you are both king and priest. The government will call you and say, let's sit down. You look like somebody who is interested in the development of the place. When they say, let's talk, you say, hold on, let me pray. They say, why? You say, that is what gave me the wisdom for me to be here. When you see non-believers, before they start any meeting, they don't care who is there. They will pray and do whatever. Remember, you need them. You will endure the painful prayer while they are talking to their God. Because the results that have come through that thing is there to show. Can I tell you the truth? Our Christianity will remain a mockery to society if we remain as priests alone. We must be able to translate that. Imagine the construction engineers, the best construction engineers in Enugu, tongue-talking, fiery believers, that when they give you a contract, you do something and sign the signature of his majesty on that work. After 30 years, it is still standing. And they ask you one day, how did this happen? And you lift your hands to heaven and you tell them this is the one who is deserving of praise. You will win more souls by that declaration than even a crusade ground. You've heard me say it many times. Imagine that Michael Jackson said, I love you, Jesus. Even if it's by mistake, there would have been more souls won 
Look at these influencers and these celebrities having several people and somebody can, after praying and fasting, somebody will influence your child with one five minutes video that will take you one year of prayers to remove that spirit out of him. Is someone learning? Look at the kind of schools our children are going to now. Little children, by the time they are eight, nine years, they are already sexually active. They are teaching them all kinds of things. But you don't like what they are teaching, but that's what your money can afford. So you enjoy it and keep rehabilitating the child till it becomes a demon. Satan knows this and he will make sure economic power does not reach the church. Political power dimension. To help me understand, this was a man who was a man of God, led about the largest church in Bahamas and was advisor to about 16 presidents, wrote almost 40 books in his lifetime and more than 90% of them were bestsellers. These were people who got, when Nelson Mandela, watch this, when Nelson Mandela came out of prison, it was him and one other person that were the delegates that were sent to go and greet him. He was a diplomat. He was an institution. Bahamas guarded him territorially. Don't say it does not matter. If not, one day you will sit down and hear within your land. Somebody will tell you from today, no more church service. Keep praying in your house, but no more church service. Somebody shout, God forbid. It is not the priests that make the physical laws. It is the kings. The purposes of God was threatened by one policy signed in Babylon. Let there be no prayer for 30 days. What happened in the lockdown? Nobody consulted with you. They didn't say, is it your opinion? You were minding your business preparing for a conference. Suddenly a policy came politically. Whether it affected you or not is none of their business. That means one day somebody can come and say from today, do not give more than two plots of land to the church. Maximum two plots of land. No more campgrounds, no more large conventions. And somebody can come and put a policy and say once it's six o'clock on the dot, no gathering again, return home. You can argue there. I don't mean to be political, but look what is happening in this in a, around. That is already a lesson and a warning to us. Let's use 10 minutes to do a miracle service. Please rise up on your feet. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, sing it one more time. You are. Father, I'm ready to take my position as a priest and as a king. Go ahead and pray. As a priest and as a king. 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 In touch with the realm of the spirit in touch with spiritual realities but translating that power and those spiritual resources manifesting them through the wisdom of the spirit creativity value productivity influence across the cosmos influencing the minds of a generation to love jesus to honor him to serve him 
to better the lives of mankind someone pray hallelujah now look at me please there are some of you by reason of this conference you will go tomorrow or next week and go and register a company in corporate affairs i have prayed i have fasted I'm, i have a note full of visions now when god gives you the green light it's time to start translating those things god has told you that you are going to be helping children put your first hundred thousand on ground and say how many children can this help it can provide school fees for three children no problem that's a good start start from there when you go to the school and bless them by the next time they will call you a time will come you go to get a visa they look at you let me tell you something hilarious that happened um, I'm in Kenya next week for a mighty apostolic meeting with them and did you know when uh, um, my passport was submitted for a visa they called me they called me at the consular office rejoicing and said thank God you are coming to our nation very quickly please go this is visa the office the people stamping the visa when they saw it they were rejoicing that one is not priesthood again that is kingship dominion i don't know whether they are christians or muslims you see when the king sends for you it is because he has seen something at work in your life this is what we are talking about i hope you i hope you know that i'm not this, this is not some bragging or whatever it is no no don't entertain remaining small and giving flimsy excuses and saying oh this and that no Jesus came in a manger he came for a reason when John saw him he did not see the baby he saw he saw the glorified Christ are we together I'm saying this because part of the graces you must receive tonight is that grace that will empower you to begin to demonstrate the wisdom the creativity the power of Jesus there are some of you who will build schools in Enugu state that by this time next year when we come we'll see that you have some of the best schools bottled water company products that will be exported and before you release the products you will lay hands and pray somebody will drink your water and says I don't know what happened but I took a bottle of water I'm taking this in London now what happened the cancer is gone now that is priesthood demonstrated hear me for as long as we keep falling down and standing up in church Satan does not mind but the moment it is time to go out aha he knows that the damage is outside the church to the kingdom of darkness hear me let us pray and fast and do whatever but when you are done know that you are not a priest alone are we together please look at me there are many of you today it is because you are doing priesthood alone that's why your family has not acknowledged the hand of God in your life you have been a priest for many years you have refused to be a king the quality of their lives have not changed through your conviction you have confessed Jesus as Lord you are saying all kinds of things the person taking care of mama is your stubborn unbelieving brother the person building the family house is your stubborn unbelieving brother the person with the influence who helps you sometimes you call him and say ah my brother I am praying can you help me we're in trouble I'm asking God for help he says how much 500,000 he says stop pray on something else and does a transfer for you and that indictment on the kingdom you may think it does not matter hallelujah whoever makes a contribution within a territory is the one who will have ears of those in power not whoever prays whoever makes a contribution are we together that they call you in and you can see the Listen, I'm not just a businessman I am a man of God he says really and you can tell him I have seen that in the next three years there will be an attack on this correct it 
and you do everything and come out wearing your suit that's how terror is dressed they are priests and they are kings they will wear their suits but they are demonic people they move around you but they are demonic people when it's time to execute they remove it and say i am not a sheep i am a wolf but they wear a sheep's clothing so that they can accept them around are we together your job is your wolf clothing that you are wearing the only way to live among wolves is to dress like a wolf not for compromise you are dressing like a wolf to grant you access to acceptance there are some of you your assignment demands you having a phd get ready to go and continue and stretch it through because the kinds of people you will be speaking to the least of them is highly intelligent you will not just carry prayer and go there they will send you out there is a protocol to the palace it is competence that unlocks the door are we together now this is the mistake that sometimes we make as men of god we give people only the template of priesthood so you find out that they keep praying praying alone and time is going and they don't develop other aspects of their lives that empower them to reign so after 10 years they've wasted the time that they should have used doing something else you can pray and still prepare for your kingship all will go together in china today children like this my little son here they are the ones designing the products that are changing the world so they write chinese they don't care whether you speak english or not you must learn their language if you need their products imagine designing a software that sings a worship song before it ends. it does not matter who you are if you must use my product you must hear that 10 seconds worship this is what i believe oh, that the church is rising are we together Thank God for what we have done as priests. But I'm praying that more of this, God will put people to raise this in Enugu State. Are we together? That the largest companies and conglomerates within Enugu State will be by not just Christians in talk, genuine people who fear God. That you can see a CEO who is a billionaire rolling on the ground before God. And do you know because of that, all his business partners will roll too. We say, if rolling is what brought this man to this place, I better roll. That is influence. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want to invite many people to this auditorium in Enugu now, you don't need to invite them one by one. Just invite the governor in his capacity as governor. There are many people who are invited by force. Is that true? That is the power of influence. A day will come, you will say, Jesus is Lord. And you will hear nations who echo back, Jesus is Lord. Because of something you have carried. This is evangelism through influence. The dominion power of the kingdom at work in you. You tell darkness, stop over nations and it will stay. Israel remained fugitives for a long time until King David arrived. And he said, no. This, this priest, 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 priest thing. We have to bring that structure and dominion. And they built God a temple. They built God a lot of things. They were prosper. Prosperity happened so much. David wanted to build God a temple. And God said, no, you have shed too much blood. The people were so happy. And he gathered the materials for his son Solomon. But Solomon lost it. Solomon remained a king. But he lost touch with priesthood. And by the time we read Ecclesiastes, there is a problem. He's lost everything. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as a fallen, backslidden man. Hear me. There are many kings that we need to reconnect them back to priesthood. Because they are kings, they are in positions of influence, but they do not fear God. There are celebrities from Nigeria going around the world doing great things. Sadly, it is not to honor Jesus. But look the level of influence. I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind that for as long as I'm alive, that king and priest dimension, we will mentor kings and we will mentor nations. We will bring them to the foot of the cross. We will stand and let them know that Jesus is Lord. A day will come the presidents of nations through our lives will stand publicly and speak over nations and say, Jesus is Lord. And I will not be 
I want you to submit your prayer request now if you are if you are yet to write your prayer request let me just give you a minute or two please feel free go ahead and write it and let's trust the God of wonders to help us within the time that we have just spare me a few more minutes and we're done thank you Jesus while you are writing can we just pray in the spirit when you write just pass it to anybody by the left or right and then let's have ushers to quickly collect it is someone praying? Something is happening. Something is happening. It is for the kingdom. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever amen over the southeast thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen southeast let's prophesy together amen 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 Amen, 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 amen. Hey, amen, 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 amen. 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 Let revival come. Let technological advancement come. Let growth and increase come. Let the dominion of the saints happen even in this land. Prophesy over your family. Let it be so. Maranatha. Let your power come. Let advancement come. Let the east of the Niger arise again. Amen. 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 Politically, economically, sociologically, ministerially. Amen. Listen. We are still going to say this amen. It is a prophetic word. This is a miracle service already. Hear me. As you are saying amen, you are saying amen in Enugu, Anambra State. You are mentioned every family. Lord, let the glory of the East arise like a man who has walked on a trophy. Are you ready now? Are you ready? Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hey! Amen, 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 amen. emergence of prayer warriors to an emergence of giants in the spirit to an emergence of men and women captains of industry priests and kings go ahead and turn it into a prayer lord we allow that emergence let there be an emergence from the east of the niger man of fire man of power man of the spirit custody 
guardians of the mysteries of heaven. Ministerially, let the east arise in the name of Jesus. Politically, let the east arise. Economically, let the east arise. That is our prophecy. Go ahead and pray. Submit your request while we pray. Let the men and the women of God upon this land experience revival, salvation, fire, even by the Spirit. Let every hole in Enugu State, let every hole in the Southeast experience the blessed fire. And to this we declare again, Amen. Hey. Amen, 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 Amen. and a grace and telling them I returned from a conference all the barren women in this family wounds a father and their wounds will open at once you are bringing to bear the power of priesthood that destinies that have been tied down they are loose by the power of the spirit hallelujah Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. A time will come. You will get up in the morning and just see the dead bodies of terrorists. Who killed them? Nobody can tell. But one of them will say, We saw men look like angels who descended with hailstones. We had the prayer of priests within the land declaring that terrorism will not find expression around our borders amen 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 you are this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle amen enough is enough it's a new season for me it's a new season for the ministry committed to me. It's a new season for my children. Is there a priest here who is declaring? It's a new season. Fresh anointing. Fresh grace. Oh, amen to the grace for revival. Hallelujah. 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 Now, this is going to be a very quick walk. I'm satisfied with what God has done. Let me just minister. We may not have the time, sadly, to prophesy and speak. But I'll just minister deliverance, pray for healing, and just release that grace for impartation. And that will be the end of it. Usually, when we have meetings like this as led of the Spirit, I think we may still have the time to do it, even if it's one minute. Just representing the fathers, I'll plead with our father, um, Daddy Onubogu, and our father, Reverend Jonathan. Yes, once, once it is time, we we'll invite them to come, and they will stand representing the fathers of the land, and they will speak one more time to the gates of the east, and declare by the Spirit that it will part hither 
and Tita and let the King of Glory come in in the name of Jesus Christ now I pray for you we're going to do it very fast the power of God is going to be coming on people right now bringing deliverance please whether you are an usher or not as soon as the power of God comes on them I want you to bring them out and let me pray for them very quickly we have to do this very fast there are people who have been oppressed by the powers of darkness already the power of God is coming on many I declare right now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus inside and outside and as you shout that name that is above all names some of you are standing for yourself but in the name of Jesus we come by the rod of a higher priesthood that an end comes to this demonic captivity for the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty in the name of Jesus are you ready father let there be a demonstration of the excellent power of the kingdom over principalities and powers yokes and curses right now at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command altars leave now now by the power of the Holy Ghost please bring them out very quickly I decree and declare covenants yokes enchantments activities of witchcraft tying down families tying down destinies be released now 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 be released now be released now please bring them out very quickly whether you are an usher or not just help those under the anointing be released now the Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us I'm still praying that fire is falling every destiny that has been tied Paragadash Kadebeta Ebreketas Kutibashiata Lakretas Kadebeleta Be released now! Be released now! Be released now! Oh, oh, oh. My help has come Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my rising has come. Oh, my rising has come. I, 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 Ebenezer, Ebenezer. We're praying. Now hear me. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing doors that have refused to open over families. I'm about to pray. Every family here that has been under closed doors, my God, by the fire, I come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Right now, at the count of three, bring them out. Those doors open now. Open now. Open now. By the force of the Spirit doors open now lift up your heads all ye gates be lifted all ye ancient doors doors that have kept people bound doors that have kept graces bound Salagada Prateka Skoda Balata Embra Kateska De Prakato Zekate be lifted, be lifted, ancient doors, be lifted. We call upon he who has the key of David. And by that key, we command every closed door, Ephata, be opened now by the mystery of the key of David. That door be opened now. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me. 
the spirit of delay that has sat on destinies no going forward the bible says now jericho was shot nothing came in and nothing came out i decree and declare everyone who is in that bondage of delay right now i call upon the god of jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind in the name of jesus be delivered now be set free now be set free now Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. The spirit of untimely death any family that has been losing people every year someone must die in the name of Jesus right now anywhere you are the spirit of death be free from it now inside outside following online be free from the influence of death Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? I bring you liberty by the Spirit of God. Hear me? Anyone called barren by this time next year, return with miracle children. The name of Jesus Christ and for all of you who are in front here in the name of Jesus the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions therefore Satan I command let God's people go now in the name of Jesus go go out of them now in the name of Jesus release their destinies by the power of the Holy Spirit let me prophesy to someone everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you hey everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen i'm not singing i'm prophesying to your destiny everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen as i prophesy start naming them everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen Allah is turning things around. Yeah, Allah is turning things around. Allah is. That's someone's testimony this night. One more time, we're going to sing it. Are you ready now? Allah is turning things around. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this request. And I want you to begin to declare. Father, everything I have dropped here, I will never have to write it again. The only thing I will pick from this altar is my strange and speedy testimony. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, go ahead and begin to pray. Like Paul, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is someone praying? It says, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4 and verse 6. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he said let your request be made known unto God In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus as I pray I want you to shout a believing amen everything you have dropped here as surely as the Lord lives for some of you between now and the next three months we command speedy answers speedy answers in the name of Jesus every door that needs to be opened for this request to turn to testimonies we open that door right now hear me everything written here that symbolizes shame and reproach may my god wipe your tears speedily and anyone who says over his dead body for you to see your faithfulness of god the ground will open and swallow them in the name of Jesus I stand upon this request prophetically everything that has stood above you causing you pain and shame we bring it under the feet of Jesus and we bring it under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly while we allow our fathers to just gently come up I want you to lay your hands anywhere you are trusting God for healing of your body no one Jesus there is no one darling there is no one Jesus there is no one else like you no one Jesus there is no one darling there is no one jesus there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles oh great there is no one else like you there is no one in the name of jesus please lay your hands there very quickly i decree and declare right now the spirit that is back of any and every infirmity within this auditorium and outside in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare be free now shout a loud amen be free now every sickness that has plagued your body I bring you healing from the throne now blood conditions be healed now bone conditions be healed now eye conditions be healed now terminal diseases be healed now HIV be healed now cancer be healed now high blood pressure be healed now back infirmities be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now heart palpitations be healed now whether I mention your case or not every infirmity that has not been planted by my father and your father I bring you the healing stream that flows from Calvary receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ anyone sick 
I command that sickness to go now. Every disease and every infirmity in the name of Jesus be healed. For you and for your loved ones who are far from here, may the angel of his presence touch them right where they are. For in Jesus' name we pray. Now please listen. Look up. The Bible says, if anyone is sick and anyone is afflicted, it does not just mean bodily affliction. That every time there is turbulence around your life, among the many strategies the Bible advises, is let him call on the elders. Is that in your Bible? That the elders have an authority that has recognition even in heaven. Age is a factor that the realm of the spirit respects. Especially they who have excelled in word and doctrine. They are worthy of double honor. There is a reason why I request the fathers to come and speak. I am a product of the blessings of fathers in this nation, across Africa and around the world. You have heard me say I'm a product of many anointings. It is true. Now listen please. Whether you are inside or outside, here is your chance to receive something. Our daddy, by the grace of God, is 83 turning 84. I don't know how many of you are 84 years here. Who is standing? Hallelujah. This is one of the oldest Amen. man of God in Nigeria. Now, when an 84 year old man who has walked with God alongside our fathers here speak over your life, it takes lack of wisdom to ignore it. Are we together? They are going to, whether they pray in Igbo, whether they pray in English, the most important thing is for your spirit to be open. For someone by this prophecy, untimely death, as you are hearing it because you are honoring the grace, you will experience it. So, I don't know how it's going to happen. Okay. I'm told the senior special advisor to the governor is here. It's a bishop. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. May God bless you. So now, at least we are covered. We have people who will speak on behalf of the government. Are you ready now? Now, what will happen is we'll pass the mic to them one by one. Let us just open our spirit. In a minute or two, they will just speak over our land. They will speak over Enugu state and speak over the east of the Niger prophetically i like you to bring your families your ministry your business by faith and connect to receive and for those who are following online you may be of, of the Igbo nation Igbo state across the globe or you may be someone who is just connected to the conference here's your chance to connect to prophecy prophecy that is coming from veterans of the gospel with an experience with god and who have had dominion over time i pray that your heart will be open in jesus name Yes, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mighty Father, we are so grateful that before now, in Southeast, you know everything. Before now, you have planned, you, made, you have made a mark that the enemy cannot erase. We thank you for your, for, for your servant you have brought to us. It's not coincidental, but you planned it. That in this time, they will bring the word that will prepare us in this southeast. Therefore, I stand in your name, Lord, on the platform of what we have heard from your servant. I ask that your glory will come down, Lord, and mesmerize all the plans that enemy has created, everything the enemy has made, the marks have made in this southeast. We command them annulled in the name of Jesus Christ. Great I am, I am that I am. I stand in your name. I summon the north gate. I summon the east gate, south gate, west gate to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. 
great I am that I am the ancient of days we are the doctor that never loses patient my God take over we stand and declare Lord that your will be done your will be done in any way in the name of Jesus Christ in South East in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we ask even now that you by your spirit sit on each gate sit on each gate and cause each gate to favor us in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you father in Jesus name amen In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we stand here today lifting up the city of Enugu into your mighty hands. Lord, we pray for an open heaven over the city. Amen. We pray that God, you begin to move mightily upon this city that your glory will, will be felt in every strata in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We lift up the entire southeast into your great hands. Father, we pray that you reposition the body of Christ to take his place and begin to reign and rule in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We come against every siege of wickedness. All the forces that have been causing bloodshed in the southeast. All the powers that have been creating terror. By the authority in the name of Jesus, we arrest you, spirits of hell. We bind you and we command your works to cease. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we release the spirit of revival. We release the spirit, oh God, of your power. Let there be a mighty move of your glory in the southeast. Father, politically, oh God, let there be a restoration. Father, economically, let there be a restoration. Father, we pray that the things that are lost will be speedily restored by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that your glory will cover the southeast as the water covers the sea. We decree and declare this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father. Because we know that it is done. In Jesus powerful name we pray. In Jesus name. Our father we thank you O oh God. That all that they meant for evil. In every life here represented. Lord you turn them to blessing in the name of Jesus. Father I declare your name ancient of days. That the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the people of Mansia that have come to our attack in your eternal purpose, you've ordained that they will bring spoils to your people. And therefore, we declare and declare a season of Baraka in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I speak truthfulness, O God, that the seed you have planted through your servant shall bear fruit in every life. Therefore, we are joy. Every bird of the air, you have no right over those seeds that have been planted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancient of days, O oh Lord. For in Jesus, awesome and mighty name, we are praying. Somebody praise the Lord. I'm going to say something very sensitive and something that will bring your mind to the reality of what governments face. I represent the governor as a senior special ad assistant on religious matters which means every religion is under my authority and i want to say something to you the governor said enugu state is in the hand of god and he was very specific but there is occult and there is cult in this state that is saying they don't want that that god to be mentioned we are going to pray a prayer in agreement we have seen the reports that nigeria has more number of firearms than syria and libya put together there are firearms and these things are being sponsored by politicians and this meeting while i was sitting down the lord said to me this meeting in enugu is to close the mouth of terrorism they want to bring 
There are people, irrespective of political party, that have said, if they don't win an election, they will kill the youths. There are people that are going to secondary schools, going to universities, to recruit cults. And one thing with the, with the cult is that when you join the cult, you become afraid of dying, so you enter the occult. You start looking for power to fortify yourself. There are people going to, to, the, to various places in Car Street where drug dealers are to go and look for women that are addicts to buy children from them, to, to, to pound them, to use it for demonic powers. We are going to pray a prayer. Anybody that is buying arms to kill us in Enugu State, anybody that is in our court, anybody that is contesting for anything in this state, and you are coming to raise another God, God of dying, God of violence, what anything they are trying to bring, no matter the political party, whether it's PDP, whether it's Labour Party, whether wherever you are, let God destroy that person. I want this to be your prayer. In Jesus' name, we are afraid. Lord, we shut the mouth of sponsors of terrorism. Lord, we shut the mouth of those going to our secondary school and our universities to recruit the cult. Wherever they are, those that have created poverty as a means, as instrument of control, so that the poorer the people are, the more malleable they are. Those that have said that Christians will not have access to government, today we dethrone them. Today we dethrone them. Anyone that is coming with an agenda to raise a deity of destruction over this land, starting from September that the electioneering period is coming, Lord, we dethrone them. Enugu State is in your hand. Whatever is in your hand cannot be taken away from you. We, the youths, have come together to say enough is enough. Those that have stolen money from the government to use it against us. Today, let this earth open and swallow them. In Jesus' wonder walking name, we are praying. Hallelujah. Amen. I will pray about long life. Hallelujah. You can agree with me that I can do that because of my age and my experience. And I have brought here, it is written. How many of you remember it is written? Number one, it is written. With long life will I satisfy you. And show you my salvation. It is written. For by me your days are multiplied. And years will be added to you. It is written. Long life is in your right hand and left hand and riches and honor the louder amen you shout the more you receive let me warn you about more it is written it is written honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Say amen. amen. Somebody shout, it is, it is written. Shout again, it is written. It is written. And so it is written. The fear of the Lord prolongs your life. Amen. But the years of the wicked 
The year of the wicked will be short. The wicked around you, kidnappers, uh, murderers, their years will be shortened. Finally, it is written Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking God. Oh Lord, I stand on it is written. And I prophesy long life for your people. Anything that will bring shortness of life, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. Unugatatal. Eighty-six, eighty-seven, hundred. Somebody shout, yeah! Hallelujah. Please, let's give them a big, big, big God bless you. Big God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Southeast, thank you so very much, Reverend Dan and your dear wife thank you so much and the entire team of pastors all who have made this program a reality may the lord honor you for every man and every woman of god here prophet apostle missionary um, whatever title or office you occupy may the lord bless you and honor you in the name of jesus and i want you to remember please do well to get all the teachings of this conference they are free and they're online pay that price to get it so that you listen to it again may the lord honor you as you depart like the fathers have spoken let this be a new season in the name of jesus that by this time next year we will only return to rejoice over enugu state in jesus name i pray enugu state southeast god bless you and i love you thank you Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.